those who don't know, this is Professor Richard Werner, the chairman of Valhalla Network. He's a professor of banking and finance at the University of Winchester. He's the inventor of quantitative easing and the author of Japanese number one bestseller, Princes of the Yen. With over 30 years researching the intricacies of banking, it's irrefutable that he's a banking legend. Thank you for joining me, Richard. So Richard, Valhalla Network is obviously built on your principles and your quantity theory of credit and your philosophy that we need more small banks. With this in mind, what do you see the vision of a network and where it's going to grow to in the next 10 years? And where do you advise us to sort of focus on, to start with, which economies to focus on? Yes. So first of all, on the vision, um, in this day and age of concentration of everything, everything is being concentrated. The forces are really strong to concentrate the economy, in, uh, concentrate industrial sectors, and particularly forces are strong to concentrate the banking sector, and now even central bank digital currency um, is likely to be introduced in, in, in most countries, which will further accelerate concentration. These are very, very dangerous uh, trends. We have to work against that, and that's what we're doing. We're setting up community banks as a decentralizing force. It's all about giving power back to the local people. Local people need banks that work for them and not the other way around. And the definition of the community bank is a bank that lends, that is based in the community, in the local area, uh, but that only lends in that local area and not outside. And when you set these up, what you get is, I mean, you get so many benefits. The community thrives. You get money creation, because bank lending is money creation, for local purposes. And our community banks, of course, will follow the principle of lending um, almost entirely for productive purposes, productive business investment. So you get more growth. You get um, employment. You get um, greater tax revenues. The government should be happy uh, because there's more growth and more activity. And the community will thrive. And there's so many historical examples when you did this in the past and similar systems were implemented in the past. I mean, there was just so much prosperity. So that's what we're doing. Um, and now there's this uh, different ways on how you could go about doing this. And essentially, I thought, well, we should try several angles simultaneously because the centralization powers are so strong. We've got to go out now and marshal as many resources as we can get and do the opposite and decentralize. And one way of doing this is through the Valhalla network, where we have a, a decentralized autonomous organization. Um, and then we have community banks that are being set up in, in many countries. Now, which countries? Well, actually, any country will benefit. Even the ones that already have many community banks will still benefit from having more community banks. We did some research with um, one of my PhD um, students looking at the US over you know, several decades. And what we found is that even the small community banks, because of growth and they're doing well, they get bigger. And as banks get bigger, they want to do business with bigger businesses. That's precisely why we constantly need to set up new banks. So, I mean, it becomes more a question of tactical you know, sequence where you want to be first, but every country needs more community banks. Great, thank you. And in, sort of in 10 years, do you see us having 500 banks in the network or maybe a bit slower, 100 banks and maybe 20 years, 1,000? How, how fast do you think Valhalla Network can grow? Yeah, um, well, <laughs> growth is unlimited. And that's because economic growth is unlimited, because economic growth actually is just a statistical fiction. That's also why growth is not a bad thing. I mean, in this day and age, also, we have to be careful. Some people think, oh, growth, you're talking about growth and growing the economy. Isn't that going to hurt the environment? No. Um, that's actually what we need. If we really want to be sustainable and protect the environment, we need the prosperity to be able to afford to do that. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to happen. That's the reality. Okay. You know, so for, for long-term sustainability, you need also social sustainability and economic sustainability. And the best way is to set up community banks and get the prosperity. Excellent. So we mentioned DAOs. So, sorry, oh, sorry, but, but uh, just to, to come back to the other part of your question. You know, so how many banks? Well, 
it's going to happen on an exponential curve. So initially, it's slow, but then as you get more traction, the number of banks will go up, and then it will just it be like a bushfire. They will be multiplied. So uh, it certainly should be in the hundreds. Uh, and we can hire more, more people to help us with the banking application process. So we mentioned DAOs. Now, why can't we just do direct lending from the DAO as a non-bank? Why do we bother setting up the community banks, each individual community bank? Yes, yeah. Well, that's an important point. In fact, uh, you could also ask, well, okay, we have this great fintech movement and fintech industry has been growing. Uh, isn't that already doing the job? Uh, no, <laughs> is the short answer for two reasons. Number one, it's centralized. And number two, it doesn't create money. You can only create money if you've got a banking license. That's why it's so important to get a banking license and to get many banking licenses so that communities have their own power to create money and alternatives non-banks uh, non-bank ways you know they can be useful they can be helpful but it will never be the same because they don't have the power to create money great thank you and why is a DAO a decentralized autonomous organization why is that the best conduit for us to use um, why don't we just seek investment for each individual community bank why are we doing it for a DAO yes uh, well as I said I mean we're we're moving in different in parallel avenues and this is one way of getting scale effects and network effects, while at the same time getting everyone access. It's transparent, it's on the blockchain, um, and everyone can participate and vote. And so that clearly is one very good way. I mean, for example, look at the, the German community banking system, which is, has the, the longest history and has, has a great history of success, 200 years of success. And they've always had this uh, slight bit of tension in a very positive way between this, you know, individual community banks, but at the same time, they were smart enough to create organizations where they would cooperate together and then get scale effects, network effects. And so this is one of our attempts to have this combination where we have, uh, you know, also something that is um, where you have lots of cooperation of all the many community banks. So you give lots of people access to this um, network and you get the scale effects, while at the same time having decentralized banks. We are, of course, also at the same time setting up banks directly. That's also happening. So, you know, we need this diversity. Excellent, thank you. And finally, Richard, you're very principled and you get many projects approaching you, uh, many people wanting you to be involved, be helping lead them, helping advise them, be on the advisory board, be a non-executive. Why did you choose Valhalla Network? You know, when I came up with the idea and I approached you and said, Richard, let's do this on a bigger scale. Let's do this all over the world, not just one bank here, one bank there. Let's do it everywhere. Why did you choose to throw your weight behind it, your support behind it, and sort of help lead us to Valhalla? <laughs> yes, well, because I see the momentum that had already you know, uh, come about in the, in the fintech scene, and also there is the you know, decentralized finance, alt currency movement, and there clearly is a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of momentum. And then you realize, well, actually, that's what I've been doing, you know, decentralized finance, setting up community banks. Um, well, why don't we plug into this community, which, which also needs to hear about what we're doing, and, and actually then combine this um, you know, all the, you know, starting with Bitcoin and various alternative currencies, people are actually starting to think about how does the monetary system work, what are the alternatives. Um, but to be truly decentralized, that's where you need community banks. And so we are introducing that in that scene. You know, that was absolutely necessary uh, for them to learn about this. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you.